Welcome to this week's Concurrency Beer 30. I'm Nathan Lesnowski, Concurrency's Chief Technology Officer, and with me is Matt Engibus, our Practice Manager for Productivity and Collaboration. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Nate. Glad to be here today. Matt, uh, tell me about what you're drinking today. Uh, well, I'm not really a big beer drinker, Nate, so I'm just drinking a root beer today, just keeping it cool going into the weekend. That's okay. Root beer is totally allowed on right. Currency Beer 30. And uh, I'm drinking a supper club. Nice. Cheers. Glad right. to have you here. Loving my, uh, loving my uh, kind of pseudo light drinking beer, not hoppy, but it has a little bit of something to it. And it's uh, end of kind of fall and summer beer. So glad to be on that today. Awesome. So we are going to talk about something that inquiring minds want to know. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about teams. We're not just going to talk about teams. We're going to talk about teams inside the context of SharePoint. So setting the stage, you know, we've been, you've been engaged in SharePoint for how long? Oh boy. Uh, been working with it since 2007. 2007. Okay. I go back maybe a little longer than that. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say. Um, and, you know, we've all had experiences with the multiple versions of intranets that have existed and the way that we've created sites and people have governed them and provisioned them and metadata and all the things out there associated with SharePoint. And Teams kind of throws a little bit of that on its head, doesn't it? So I'm really curious about your take in how the intranet, say, VNext is changed by the introduction of teams you know how, where does teams play in that space how does it change the way the internet is you know positioned accessed used and what's the place of the internet versus the place of maybe the place of the internet portal versus the place of the team's experience and them merging together big question acquiring minds want to know yeah yeah so yeah great question and, you know, I think portals, internets, you know, they continue to, you know, be there and, you know, it's a place for people to go and get their news. But I think what is really been great to see with teams is that, you know, employees can create a team, a collection of files and documents and conversations with the way that they're working every day. You know what I mean? So like sometimes people go and, you know, they get a lot of use out of the portal. Sometimes they don't get as much use out of the portal. Um, and so where I think teams can be really that more of that, hey, as a group, we're working on a project. Hey, let's build a collection of information, files, all together, and now we can work and, and create that and adapt and make a change. Mm -hmm. like we can't, our portals don't change as quickly as we want them to and how the business demands. Bring the content to the people. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think when I think about it, I think about how like people used to have to go to somebody to get a SharePoint collaboration site where they put their stuff, and then they were like told to populate it with things, and then they might or may or may not do that. And now it's like I mean, I have a bunch of people working with each other, or there's a process for creating needs for us to work together. And the content just kind of comes along for the ride, in a sense. Like it's part of the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really, it really does just kind of you you spin up your team, and you know you've got kind of all these tabs and integrations, but you have so much more now easily at your fingertip. You know, you think about okay, how am I going to put this on a page and customize the SharePoint thing? Yeah, it's still SharePoint in the back end, but now I can highlight specific content, spreadsheets, and have that all in a tab with my you know, conversations, with my files, with my spreadsheets, with my PowerPoint, and I can kind of just quickly navigate between, and don't forget OneNote. I love, love, did I say love? Love OneNote. Um, and you know, just like to keep everybody on the same page, meeting minutes, keep all of that captured right there and in the context of Teams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you spin up a team and you have that files area of the team, that is actually SharePoint underneath the covers there. And when it when you're working with it, you're uploading files, you're using them. You know, what is the place of SharePoint governance then in that picture? Is there a place of SharePoint governance? How does that all kind of fit together? Yeah, yeah. So again, good good question. 
And I think it really is when you get into like SharePoint governance and even taking maybe a step back, like just files governance, right? When I'm spinning up a team, if you spin up a team today, you just turn it on. There's integrations to other files. I know there's, there's other content repositories out there like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive. And so it's really important from a governance perspective that you put some controls around that and make sure like, hey, if we don't allow that, we don't just let a team automatically connect and that, hey, by default, we really want people to store their files inside of SharePoint because we want to keep that all secured and controlled within uh, that environment. Yeah, and that's where Microsoft DLP technology can come into play, you know, AI, uh, AIP and um, you know, protecting the content itself and then doing conditional access around accessing the content to the team. You know, so there's some neat things that you can put around that Point of point of access that maybe you couldn't do before. So that's I think that's a nice aspect of Microsoft's single strategy for not only allowing for collaboration of content but sharing of content. Um, you know when you think about the portal's relevancy, it still has a purpose, right? So you know even though a lot of the content that you're accessing and collaborating on might be through the Teams interface, there's still a reason to use the SharePoint portal. Portal. What would that reason be? Yeah. So. Great point. Um, still alive and well. And if you go and look at like the, um, you know, the SharePoint lookbook, go and Google that and you get a really nice view. Microsoft's put together this really nice SharePoint uh, example of the modern experiences. So it's really geared more towards like communication spaces. You still have your team sites, which connects in with teams. Um, and you can still have that really nice dynamic for things like HR, sales, um, different projects that you want to collaborate on, you still have those central repositories where people can go and get that information. And those content authors, content owners, they can still control all of that and really provide a one-stop, clear place for people to go in the organization. Whereas teams, again, more towards that project, how teams are working. And you can pull the two together too, which is really cool too. Yeah, it seems like the portal's purpose is content down like i've i've got a diverse set of individuals they need information that is company centric standardized information that aligns to me you know whether i'm selling something or i'm implementing something or i have a need a policy or i'm curious about the executive direction and i want to understand what the executives are telling us about the future of the company you know a lot of that might be content down but then when it comes to like you and me working together on something that's a team yeah, right. And self-forming and then maybe even self-stewarding in the sense that, you know, the teams tend to move into that sort of decommissioned state where they're not in your main view. Is that kind of how you look at it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I know uh, just, you know, the way that you're, you're used to getting that information, that's why, you know, sometimes the portal isn't as useful to teams. Like if we're working on a project, we're not gonna go out to the portal and be like, okay, let's start working together. No, let's spin up something. We may wanna add somebody, we may not even know who's gonna all be on our team to start with, right? But then we can easily add that, grant that membership, bring them in, bring some Power BI in as we get into like some reporting and taking those spreadsheets. So yeah, it can really grow and evolve with how we're gonna work. Mm, interesting. You know, as you think about the goal of any digital workplace technology, we talk about customers, partners, and employees, right? It's the things that we're trying to change and influence within an organization. And this is primarily the employee space, which then impacts the way they engage with their customers and partners. Mm -hmm. Tell me about why leveraging teams drives effectiveness, efficiency, makes people better at what they do. Because you know, that's really the measuring stick, right? Does it do that? Right, right. Yeah, so I think what really the, the sweet spot um, and really what the big advantage is, you know, so many organizations and employees, they go back, they, they fall back to email or they leverage email so much to communicate with each other. And it's really like you lose context, you lose kind of that, that follow up um, sometimes and we all get plenty of emails, right? Whereas if we work with teams, now I can get all of that into that conversation. I can keep my context together. I've got my chats, my videos, my meetings, my files, my OneDrive files and my SharePoint files. Again, 
all together. Uh, it's just, I, I really like the way that it works and it, it works for our teams. Are yeah. fun. <laughs> so is there objective data that, that either industry-wise is available around teams usage and how it improves the working relationships or efficiency? Or is there a way that I, as a company that's implementing teams, can measure my own usage of the platform and how it impacts my employees? Yeah, so that is, <laughs> that, that's really cool. Um, because a lot of organizations now are looking for ways that they can kind of understand how their employees are working, right? So there's a, a product by Microsoft called Workplace Analytics, and you can actually turn that on and get insights, get that basically exhaust from Office 365, all the things that you're doing in there, where you're emailing, scheduling, who you're working with. You can get that from Workplace Analytics and Forrester just published something uh, not too long ago, uh, one of the reports, and the impact of teams on organizations and how much it's saving money on meetings, saving the amount of emails, uh, and just helping people work faster and more efficiently. So WPA lets us gather those signals that tell us about how effective or ineffective our employees are using technology or leveraging it to make their lives and work experiences better and then can translate that into before teams, after teams, and understand how they're more productive, and where we can make them more productive, and where the work habits are good or not so good. Right, and then we can, we can adapt, we can identify teams that are maybe not as productive, and we want to help them, right? Give them some information. So maybe they're not aware. Maybe what we thought they all knew or saw our email or saw our communications and training, maybe they didn't know. Mm. And so we can really target areas and really understand what a successful team looks like, a highly productive team, a well-performing team, and what tools they're using. And then how can I translate that across other teams? And that's a big point. You know, I think sometimes people think about this as like punitive, like, oh, we, we've noticed that your team is ineffective and we're gonna come get you. You know, it's really more about, we know what an effective team looks like. Right. And people want to be more effective. You know, people want to be more successful at what they do. And if I can show them what is more effective, then they're gonna to wanna to copy it, right? You see the guy who's got the stone wheel that's a square, and then you see the guy that's got the stone wheel that's a circle, and you're like, you know what, I kinda of want the circle because that seems a lot easier. And then it's a rubber wheel, and then it's like, I wanna copy that guy. You don't wanna go back to the old way. Um, so I think it's a nice opportunity for us to look at what's successful in copying, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. So, you know, maybe it's obvious, but um, just due to your enthusiasm, but you know, when you think about what makes you excited to get up every day and, and work with things like Teams and workplace analytics and engaging the employee community with these technologies, you know, what is it? What makes you be excited about that? Well, it's really the customer experiences and working with our customers and working with our team. Like we have a great team, um, here at Concurrency, we have a great group of customers, and really that's what gets me up in the morning excited to be able to work and share new things that we're learning because this is always a, this is always um, enhancing and improving. Um, and just when we get into the elements of like really trying to understand how we can help somebody be more productive, like if you can do that, you, you're creating a friend for life, right? Amen. And yeah. That's that's really exciting. Cool. Cool. All right, Matt. Well, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next time on Concurrency Beer 30. All right, thanks. Cheers.